Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live here in Jerusalem. The menorah in the background here, the one that will be used in the third temple once that is actually constructed. And we're going to be talking about that tonight with Pastor Paul Begley from the United States. Is a television channel, The Coming Apocalypse, as well as uh, his YouTube channel, Paul Begley 34. Brother Begley, God bless you, my brother. And Praise thank God. you for being on here with us. It's an honor. And uh, Pastor Begley happened to be at the Knesset, and I actually was there with him when interviewing uh, uh, Rabbi Yehuda Glick at the Knesset about the two state solution. And Pastor Begley, can you tell us a little bit about what was said in that interview? You know, uh, in the conversation, what happened is the United Nations, basically 20 nations of the world have gathered in France and were working on a two-state solution that would be a resolution brought before the UN that would be voted on, they want to vote it on, to do a forcible two-state solution. The problem is, I said to Yehuda Glick, Rabbi Yehuda Glick, I said, you know, Israel's not at the table and neither is the Palestinians. So do you realize that they're trying to force this two-state solution? And he was pretty adamant, I mean, very adamant, that, uh, look, they had their chance in 1947, they had their chance in 1967, they had their chance in the year 2000. And uh, it failed. It's, it's, it's over. No more two-state solution. And so he even mentioned, um, about the fact that how can you have a marriage unless there's a groom and a bridegroom. Yes, he was actually quoting Prime Minister Netanyahu in his remarks what he had said about uh, the two states or the French meeting there in France when he had actually stated that you cannot have a marriage without a bride and a bridegroom. That's where he actually takes that from. And what's fascinating is when this interview, we were there uh, helping you film the interview with Rabbi Glick, and I like to fell out of the seat when I heard him say, it's over. There is there is no more two state. And he's like you said, he said, he named the dates, 1947, just before they fought for the independence. Uh, and, and that's interesting in itself. A lot of people may not realize, why would they be talking about two states back then? This was because the British mandate had already given what would be the Palestinians today the land in Jordan because there was a mandate for the Jordan, for, for the Arabic people living in this land to live in the country of Jordan. There was no country of Jordan. No. So this was their chance then, but they did not go. Just right. as the British mandate had given the Jewish people their own place, their own state, and what happened in 1948, the Jewish people ended up having to fight for that right to have their own state there. Right. Now, we did an interview, uh, Pastor Begley, with Shimon Tov. You had also interviewed him yes. as well. And he brought out something that just stunned both of us because you were there as well. And Shimon Tov said that uh, he didn't give the date. We're assuming it was the year 2000. But uh, he was back when Ariel Sharon was prime minister of Israel. He shared with us that, uh, that one lady that was in the cabinet meeting there with United States delegation also, I believe those Palestinians were there as well. Other people were there. And a two-state solution was actually signed that day. Now, she came, she uh, contacted uh, Brother uh, Shimon Tov, weeping uncontrollably. Yes. And you are a witness to this as well as I am yes. of what he said, uh, weeping uncontrollably when he calmed her down. She said to him, because he asked, why are you weeping like this? She says, I just witnessed a two-state solution deal has been signed. Can you elaborate on what you heard as well? I heard him say it, and, uh, and he said it with uh, such, pa you know, basically he was to the point where he was reacting again as if he heard it again for the first time. It had been uh, 16 years, I'm assuming, and... He said she literally was distraught because she knew the significance of a two-state solution. And now when this thing was secretly signed, it was to be implemented over time. What's amazing about that is throughout the city, every time, every year I come back here, there's more and more and more changes. What looks like potential uh, border crossings in the middle of areas that should never worry about a border. Okay, yes. so we're seeing a lot of new infrastructure, new signage in the old city. 
uh, there seems to be a, 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 a an atmosphere of slowly boiling Israel into a two-state solution. It's almost like you can see it happening without anybody saying it. It's hid in plain sight. And I heard him say that this is a very reparable man. Believe me, he's not going to lie about that. And uh, exactly. so something happened under Ariel Sharon and uh, Shimon Perez. Something happened in that meeting that um, may may been in the process of still being trying to be implemented. And I think your current prime minister now, Benjamin Netanyahu, as well as now the new Knesset member, uh, Rabbi Yehuda Glick, and others are building a coalition of digging in their heels and saying, no, it's over. I agree with you. You know, uh, myself as well as Pastor Begley, we both aired uh, programs regarding the news on, uh, I brought out the side from Shimon Tov, as well as the information of what Rabbi Yehuda Glick had said. Uh, Pastor Begley had given us uh, permission with Israeli News Live to be able to air the footage from uh, Rabbi Yehuda Glick, where he was saying basically that the two-state deal was dead. Uh, but let me just share something with you, though, in, in light of that. It brought a lot of confusion around because I had titled my uh, own video, <laughs> "A Two-State Solution." Or the two-state uh, two-state solution has been signed. Sound like an explosion in the background there. I heard that. Was, I heard that. Uh, her gun shot a minute ago, but now it was like a small explosion there. But anyway, then Pastor Begley had signed, uh, did his video, and your title of your video was Two-State Solution is Dead." And everybody was saying, they were writing us both, wait a minute, you guys are, you, you both are supposed to be in agreement pretty much on everything, and now it sounds like you're doing differently. And what it was, was Pastor Begley was bringing out only Yehuda Glick's side. He has not brought out the part from Shimon Tov as of yet. He will, though. He has the footage of that video, yeah. which we have not aired as yet either, the interview. But that will air later this week. Brother Begley, no telling when he'll air it, but he'll be airing it pretty soon as well. And we want you to hear that. But here's what's interesting that I noticed in the interview, uh, Brother Begley. When we got, when I was listening to Rabbi Yehuda Glick, and Rabbi Yehuda Glick, he brought out, when he was talking about, he said, there's no two-state solution anymore. Anymore. I did not catch that when he first said it. But when I heard it then, Pastor Begley, especially afterwards this was only hindsight i was beginning to think wait a minute they know about what happened with ariel sharon right and, and, and now this is this is normally let me just say this here because i always like to look at the prophecy behind what's going on here but when you look at daniel the prophet of israel and we look at what daniel said in chapter 11 and verse 14 he speaks about in there in, in english in the KJ, kjv the, the bible that most christians use you don't catch the full meaning of it. You have to go to Hebrew, but it literally says this. The angel Gabriel says to Daniel, the sons of the lawless will actually try to marry the vision. I couldn't help but think when he quoted Prime Minister Netanyahu, that when he says that, I thought of Daniel 11. I like to fell out of my seat because I know that's what he says, the sons of the lawless. Now, Rabbi Glick and Prime Minister Netanyahu are not the sons of the lawless. And I want no, to make sure that's no. clear. But here's the thing, though. I always knew Shimon Peres, who had sold out to Israel in doing these agreements with the Palestinians, was definitely one of those sons of the lawless. When I heard that Ariel Sharon had signed that two-state solution in contradiction to Joel's prophecy that we're not to divide the land, I became very seriously concerned, and I could not help but wonder, was that the sons of the lawless? But then I also knew, Pastor Begley, that the marriage that Prime Minister Netanyahu was talking about, that you can't have, uh, the, without the bride and bridegroom, you can't have the marriage. Right. Now we knew what that, that marriage of that vision was all about. We were literally looking at the vision. Right. Uh, and that marriage, by the way, is in Isaiah 61 and chapter 62. It's the restoration of Israel as a nation. And they're trying to bring it about without the coming of the Mashiach. And that is Yeshua, who we know. Brother Begley, kind of comment on these things as well. What's well, you thoughts? know, it's, it's amazing because you picked up on that when he said that in that interview uh, with Yehuda Glick. And, uh, and the fact that uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had already made this a very uh, emphasis on this marriage and that they had tried and tried. Matter of fact, I even thought back to when John Kerry, the Secretary of State, did the nine-month, when he said, okay, yes. we're going to take nine months 
to see if we can deliver these two-state solution. Well, I knew there was prophecy that talked about Rebecca when she was pregnant and how that in the Lord said to her, and she was struggling with the pregnancy. And she said, Lord, you know, she went to the Lord, inquired of the Lord, and the Lord said, in your womb is two nations and two manner of people. Now, uh, when you think about that, I think they actually thought, the Obama administration, that he could take these nine months and birth these two nations. Yes. But you see, prophecy doesn't work that way. It doesn't work on man's timetable. It works on God's. And so even though... Uh, Ariel Sharon, let's say in Sharon Perez and some of the others, and there were American delegation there as well as European delegation. And who knows, maybe, maybe Rome was there, I don't know. But one thing's for sure, they thought this two-state solution, they're trying to birth it over a, maybe a 20-year period. Yes. Um, and Obama wanted to birth it in nine months. God, look, God already warned against this. You don't want to touch the apple of God's eye. You're not going to do this. Uh, so... There will be a division, but you read about it in Zechariah 14, and it's more of a attack that comes upon this city right here. Yes. Half the city falls temporarily. It looks like it's going to completely fall, but the Lord will fight the battle, and nowhere do I really read of where it will be divided. Certainly, God's not intending that it happen. If there is a compromise it will be maybe to build the third temple and that's the only way I can see that ever really coming about and that might be after maybe a war like a Psalms 83 war I don't know but exactly. I see right now there's an attitude in this nation digging in their heels yes there's going to have to be you're going to have to pry it out of their hands and I don't see that happening very easily I don't either Pastor Begley and I, I am in agreement with you on that as well because what I'm seeing myself is that it was Yasser Arafat that caused that deal to collapse. In fact, that's what exactly. the prophecy of Daniel says as well. When you finish that verse in verse 14, he says, and they shall stumble. I think it's fall in the KJV, but it's stumble in the Hebrew Bible. And this is what has happened. Uh, the, the deal stumbled. They tr they, they'd made the two-state solution. It was signed. But I also heard that Yasser Arafat, when he heard that they wanted to build the third temple on the, on the, on the Temple Mount alongside the Dome of the Rock, he then refused to allow it. And this is where, then, of course, he mysteriously dies. Now, Israel has been blamed for the death of Yasser Arafat, but I have wondered if it wasn't an inside uh, job done by possibly, uh, well, I won't blame names on this one here, but uh, there's some people very close to the Palestinians and it's not Israelis. So I do not believe it was Israelis. I'll just say it like that okay. for this broadcast here. Uh, one thing else, Pastor Begley, before we uh, end this broadcast here, we know that today in the United States, there has been a terrorist attack. It was done by a, a Muslim man. Yes. Uh, he has killed more than 50 people. I think they consider it the largest number of deaths in a terrorist attack. I think it's 49 or something like that. It's 50. Wounded. 50 wounded. Uh, there was 50 killed and 53 wounded. 53 wounded. Now, the trouble that I have with this is Pastor Begley just shared with me tonight that Obama is blaming this now on gun ownership and taking the idea completely away from what's really happening. You know, instead of saying it was truly a terrorist attack, he mentions nothing about the fact that it was a Muslim man that did the job. He says nothing about that. Now, if he does that in America, what do you think he does with the Israeli people? He's not right. treating them right either. No, he's not. And the Israeli people are constantly being bombarded by terrorists constantly in this country. And then the Obama administration throws the Israeli people under the bus, has no concern or love for the people, as he's doing the American people right now in this latest incident in their country. Can you elaborate? Yes, it's, it's a terrible situation. Fifty people were killed. Fifty-three were wounded. The man that shot him, his name is Omar Mateen. His parents from Afghanistan, he was radicalized and was in, went into this nightclub and murdered 50 Americans and injured 53. He did it on Pentecost, which is, of course, 50. Okay. Shavuot, <laughs> okay. Yes. So uh, it's a horrible scene. The President of the United States just spoke maybe 30 minutes ago, never once mentioned radical Islam never mentioned uh, the motivation of the, uh, apparently, never said it was a, a terrorist attack, but blamed the gun owners of America. 
and said, all we got to do is take away these guns or limit the guns and we can stop this. And that's not the problem. The American citizens are not bringing this upon themselves. And so we should learn it from America. We should learn what they know here in Israel. And that is, you know, if you want to defend yourself, you got to have something to fight with. Okay, and the Israeli people understand that. Our problem in America is our president of the United States and many others uh, do not understand or refuse to acknowledge who the enemy really is and where it's coming. And tonight, 50 people are dead and 53 are wounded in the worst terror attack since 9 11, and our president doesn't even think it's a terror attack. So I'm standing here today saying to you in Jerusalem, to pray for America, just like I pray for the peace of Jerusalem, I say pray for America because we need some strong leadership. We need some folks that have a clue what's really going on and to take a stand. Uh, because if America's weakened, then the entire free world is weakened, yes. including this nation. At some, I mean, Look, we have to work together is what I'm saying. So... Um, I'm very disturbed by this. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Begley, for being with us here on Israeli News Live. One thing, let me just say in closing here to the Israeli people that are watching tonight, Rabbi Yehuda Glick once again has said that the two-state solution is over. over. It is finished. Over. He is fighting for it. He is now in the Knesset. And I believe, I can't say that he speaks for Prime Minister Netanyahu, but that's his own words there. So pray for Israel. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Stand with our Israeli brothers and sisters because they need it in this hour here that we're living in. Shalom from Israel. Shalom.